Gang sexual assault and sex assault with a weapon. Those are some of the charges that have been laid against six students here at St. Michael's College School. Those arrests are in relation to several disturbing videos that are now under police investigation. Good evening and welcome to City News. Tonight, we continue our in depth team coverage of these new developments. In just a few minutes, we are going to take you to the Ontario Youth Courts where those six teenage boys appeared this afternoon. But first, the latest on the investigation. Uh, which now includes another sexual assault video. We're also learning about more about what the school knew and didn't report immediately. And you will be hearing from St. Mike's principal. My understanding is that the uh, specific victim is doing okay. He has gotten the support he needs and deserves. As far as other victims, we are investigating a minimum of four. Five students surrendered. One was arrested on his way to school this morning. All are facing charges related to the first video we uncovered on Wednesday of a violent attack police have classified as child pornography. Here's a breakdown of the police investigation so far. Six teenagers are facing a charge of assault, sexual assault with a weapon, and gang sexual assault. Police know of four attacks so far. They are being investigated as two assaults, two sexual assaults. The second sexual assault video was reported to police on Thursday. All of these attacks happened this school year. Charges have been laid in connection to just the broomstick video so far. And police are in possession of numerous videos and are in the process of figuring out if they are a part of the same four incidents or or if more assaults have taken place. During the course of our investigation, we have reason to believe that there's uh, more incidents and potentially more videos. I, I can't get into what's leading me to believe that, but I do believe that there's more videos uh, and or more incidents. The school's failure to report these videos immediately were also scrutinized by the inspector of Toronto's sex crimes unit. The Child, Youth and Family Services Act pay, puts a duty on all individuals, and in particular, professionals working with children to report to a society instances where a child may be in need of protection. In your opinion, do you feel that this video, the, the, the initial sexual assault video, should have been reported on that Monday evening? Yes. According to police, the school's principal, Greg Reeves, called 13 Division last Monday to get some advice on a minor hazing incident that may have happened at the school. No further action was taken. An official report was never filed. Isn't that the principal's um, responsibility as, as a guardian of, of these kids when they're in school? Yeah. The phone call was advice driven. It was uh, a principal looking for direction on how he and or the student could proceed. Police claim when officers arrived on Wednesday asking about a video that media called about, that's when the principal revealed to police that there were three incidents, two assaults and a sexual assault that he had been aware of for the last day and a half. The fourth assault was reported on the Thursday. This evening, Principal Reeves held a scrum inside the school's arena and was once again questioned about that timeline. But you didn't file a report until police came to you. You only filed a report when police came knocking on your door. That's not true. That's what police say. No, I filed the report because the police showed up. And what happened was the police officers showed up to our school on a different matter. So at that point, I said to him, this is what we're dealing with right now. We're not involved in the other matter. So you never called police? I fully intended to call police that day. Now, Principal Reeves was supposed to be at that Toronto Police News Conference this morning uh, to take questions from media, but then a bomb threat was called, or rather made, against uh, St. Mike's School here, so he had to turn around to deal with that situation. Tonight, though, Reeves did admit that the school has a very serious problem, and on top of social workers being hired, there's now a confidential voicemail that students can call to report things like assaults, hazing, and bullying. I'm now going to send it over to Erica, who's been standing by at the Ontario Youth Courts, where those teenagers teenage boys made an appearance today. Erica, what's happening on your end? Well, Shauna, emotions certainly running high outside of the youth courthouse today. As you mentioned, the six St. Mike students accused in the alleged gang sex assault of another student appeared for, before a judge for the first time. And actually, they were supposed to appear at about 2.15. And just minutes before that, the fire alarm was pulled here. The entire building was evacuated. And then minutes later, we were let back in. But the parents, of course, not wanting to speak to media, very upset. They actually bypassed us altogether, went straight into the courthouse. 
The six accused students appeared in court in groups of three and two, and one student appeared before the judge by himself. Now, there is a publication ban in place, which means we can't report on much of what was said in the courtroom today. But here's what we can say. Four of the accused students are 15 years old, and two of them are 14. They've all been charged with assault, gang sexual assault, and sexual assault with a weapon. The parents were also in court today. Each family has retained their own lawyer. Now, they have all been released on bail ranging from five to seven thousand. Here's the conditions of their bail. The accused students are not to have contact with each other or the coaches of the St. Mike's football team. The accused are also not to have any contact with the alleged victim in this case and are to stay 200 meters away from the areas he, he may frequent. Their social media use must be under supervision at all times by their surety. In all cases, it would be apparent. They're also not able to possess any weapons. As the youth appeared in front of the judge today, most of them not displaying much emotion, blank expressions on their faces, although one student did visibly look scared or worried. A couple of the accused were dressed in button-down shirts and blazers. One had a black hoodie. Another was wearing a T-shirt. Now, uh, after after court, uh, most of the parents and the students were picked up in vehicles. They actually drove right up here uh, in uh, vehicles with tinted windows and then drove off. So we weren't able to really speak to any of them. And those who did actually walk past us did not want to speak to us at all, just ignored us completely. We did ask the lawyers if they did want to comment, but they told City News that they were told by their clients' parents that they would not uh, be making any comments at all today. So the accused are scheduled to return to court on December 19th at 9 a.m.